Welcome to Digital Asset News. I get top stories in crypto and bring out a bite sized piece. Today, another scandal, this one with the Federal Reserve. And it just goes to show you that the people behind the scenes really do pull the strings. So it's up to you to find the best strategy for what you're going to do. And we'll talk all about that in a little bit. Also, we're going to talk about what whales are buying right now because uh, the market today on the 9th of January is not looking so hot. We're taking a little bit more of a beating. And lastly, we'll take a look at uh, Samsung and their crypto play. And then finally, finally, we'll talk about an upcoming uh, Puerto Rico meetup, which will be this Tuesday. So to go over all those things, first, we have to take a look at what's going on in the market. And today is just another, in all honesty, a sideways day after a seven day brutal hit uh, for what we have going on in the market. The market cap's 1.94 trillion. So we lost a 2 trillion market cap. Now we're below that. We're staying below that. Sunday's never a really good day. And then the only thing that really matters is, not matters, but we'll kind of see how things operate when everybody wakes up. Uh, Asia markets, and then also on Monday when uh, the stock market opens up, we'll see how things go. Because there was a little bit of a sideways action. And Monday, I think, is going to be a big day. But Bitcoin right now is below 42, but it hasn't slumped down to 39 or 33 or 30 or 20K like some people have been predicting. It's still kind of just floating around. And over the last uh, 24 hours, it's up a whopping 0 0.06. Watch out. Ethereum is still hovering around 3,100. It was around 32, lost a little ground, 24 hours down 2%. But look at those seven-day changes. 12% for Bitcoin, 18% on Moch, Binance Coin, 17%, Solana down 20%. Uh, Terra is up 6% for 24 hours. It's amazing. Avalanche is up 2%. Chainlink is up 9% and 28% in the last seven days. And it's like I talk about, I just, I know people are like, why are you holding on to Chainlink? Because everybody's going to need it. It's a, it's an Oracle. It's what they, you know, they need to do to actually pull real uh, data onto the blockchain because they can't do that. So that's what's going on in the market. And you can just kind of look at it. I mean, ICP is up 20% for no great reason. 7% for uh, said Leo. Everything's just down across the board and just, it is what it is. So that's what we have. But what I want to talk to you, the big thing is the Fed scandal. And we, when we go over the story, I want you to think about just how hard it is to get in front of people with a bunch of insider knowledge because there's things that we'll never know. And it's very tough to kind of pick those spots because there's some people behind the curtain pulling the strings. And if people always say, no, 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 you can figure it all out by, by, by doing this or that, really, it doesn't, I personally don't think it's like that. I think there's people that shape what's going on and I'm just along for the ride. And that's why, like we did a video yesterday where we talked about all these different hedge funds with all their quantitative analysis and all the things that they do and how great it is. But uh, the best strategy that was found by uh, this report uh, from PricewaterhouseCoopers in May of 2021 was essentially the buy and hold. That's pretty much it. So let me know what you think about this after I read this nice little piece where we talk about the Fed trade ethics scandal. Now, this isn't the first one. It's not going to be the last. So this is what we got going on. Uh, New York Times author uh, Gina Smielek wrote that correlated disclosures show that Vice Chair Richard H. Clarida, I think that's uh, this gentleman right here, uh, sold a stock fund, then swiftly repurchased it before a big Fed announcement. And uh, if people think, ah, oh, that's not so bad, just one, just wait. Clarita, the departing vice chair of the Federal Reserve, failed to initially disclose the extent of a financial transaction he made in early 2020 as the Fed was preparing to swoop in and rescue markets amid the unfolding pandemic. And it gets worse. It's not the first time. Last September, the Wall Street Journal published an article that revealed Dallas Fed President Robert Kaplan made multiple million dollars plus stock trades in 2020, according to a financial disclosure from provided by his bank. And this controversy pushed uh, our guy Jerome Powell to direct his staff to start an ethics inquiry into the financial activities of the Fed members. Clarida's trades in particular were reportedly settled the day before Powell announced the Fed's emergency measures to help bolster the economy. Here's the thing. I know people love TA and people love uh, analysis and people love to really dig into it. And that's good because it can kind of shape some of the things, but there's some things you just really can't shape. And this is just one of those deals where like somebody knows somebody, Clarita, he knows Powell. Powell says, we're going to do this. All right. Sounds good. Let me visit my broker. Let me purchase some stocks or sell some stocks, whatever else you want to do. 
Even uh, Kelly Loeffler did that thing, and that's why she's not the uh, senator of Georgia anymore. Just a, just a thing, just a little, little history. So then that person knows that, and then someone knows clearly and goes, what's, clearly what's going on? Oh, I'm just doing this thing. Okay, then they purchase or they, or they sell. And then someone knows somebody and then they sell. Before you know it, usually the people at the top know a lot of rich people. And before you know it, those whales are messing up the market. Before you know it, you got a bunch of cascade effects and here we are. So again, that's why I just buy and hold. It just makes sense for me. I have my goals working out okay so far so let me know what you think about that in the comment section because it's really going to lead us to our next point which is well if that's going on what are the whales buying right now because it seems like a lot of people are selling so what are the people who look in long term what are they doing well this is a pretty decent article from daily hot and they say uh whales splurge 36.5 million on ethereum based altcoin here's what they're doing so the fifth the 557th largest whale I can't imagine the biggest whale. Uh, splurged uh, 36.5 million on 1,049,000 FTX tokens. That's FTX. Uh, that's the exchange, Sam Bankman Free to Believe. Uh, 8.8 8 million on uh, 4.2 million Matic. Uh, 17, almost 18 million Ave. And 61,400 Link. Whale stats also found the fourth ranked largest ETH whale on the planet, known as Light. That's a pretty funny inverse name. Hauled in 624, 625,000 engine worth about 1.5 million. Imagine being able to really buy the dip. I mean, really buy the dip by millions. And then uh, there's another list by whale stats. The top 10 purchase tokens by ETH whales in the last 24 hours uh, are stable coins, USD coin and Tether. First of all, why are they accumulating those? Well, if you can accumulate stable coins, there's a lot of different platforms that'll give you 10, 12, 16% yield. And if you're buying millions of dollars worth of that, that's the easiest play you can possibly do. It's a stable coin and you get millions of dollars out of it. That's what I would do too. I just don't have uh, the 30 million. So what are you going to do? Uh, Link Matic uh, wrapped Bitcoin also, also being scooped up. Play to earn gaming token yield guild games, crypto exchange, MXC foundation engine, and the gaming altcoin gala games. And that's actually one that I'm uh, having dollar cost averaging in for quite some time, uh, as well as... Uh, Matic. So uh, if you're looking for what they, what whales are doing behind the scenes, first of all, they're kind of screwing everybody by uh, buying and selling stocks because Federal Reserve, we just take a look at. Second, other ones are, hey, if you're going to sell and you're going to you know have a knee-jerk reaction, I'm going to buy a bunch because in the long term, it's going to be okay. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section, which leads us to our next little snippet of information, which is the Samsung crypto play and uh i'm always trying to figure out where things are going in the future i like to be ahead of it if you're watching this video you're probably a futurist yourself you probably try to look at what's going on because that's why you're here you probably purchased a little bit of crypto so for this one i thought it was interesting that samsung uh reveals a virtual store 837x in decentraland which is the metaverse play with uh a pretty cool stuff so this is what we got. The company has opened a store, Samsung, within the blockchain virtual metaverse, Decentraland. The Samsung 837X store is modeled from the physical location in New York City, and the virtual store will be open to Decentraland visitors for a limited time. And I gotta tell you, I've been uh, talking back and forth with uh, uh, Boson Protocol, and uh, one of their higher ups says that he believes that everybody is going to own a virtual version of the physical things that they buy. And he kind of laid it out to me and explained it to me. And it made, it made sense because we're going to have a dual identities as time goes on. I know that sounds crazy, but didn't it sound crazy like 30 years ago that you could stream a movie uh, across the internet? Like, there's no way that could happen. And there's no reason for that because I can just go to the movie theater. I can watch it on TV. I can just go. And now look where we're at. So it's kind of like expanding it. So when I see these things, not just the Decentraland plays, but bigger companies getting into it, it makes me think, okay, well, I'm glad I purchased that the Decentraland uh, pieces, parcels, also the Sandbox parcels, also for the Sandbox and the engine coins and all those things that we've been doing and kind of accumulating behind the scenes because I think in the future, it's going to play off pretty well. Could be wrong, not financial advice, just what I'm doing. And to finish up, the company for the details of the visitors, visitors will be able to experience the connectivity theater, the sustainability forest, which I believe they partnered with Cardano on that one, and the customization stage. 
According to Samsung fans, perusing through the theater and forest can complete quests along the way for NFT badges. The stage will feature a metaverse mixed reality live dance party hosted by DJ Gamma Vibes. I will not be attending that. Sounds great for somebody else. Anyhow, and that's what we have going on. And then lastly, uh, like uh, we talked about, just want to finish up with this. I'm going to do a Puerto Rico meetup uh, this Tuesday, and I'll reveal where it's going to be at and all that stuff in the time. Uh, just follow me on Twitter. Uh, it's at News Asset. Very simple. The links in the description. And the reason why I, I want to do this is because I went to a couple meetups here in Puerto Rico, and they're at some super fancy, I mean, expensive, like, hotels, which was great. Even I was walking, I was like, God damn, this is... This is kind of intimidating. Uh, so like when I think about these things, I'm like, is this what the average investor, I mean, kind of looks at and goes, okay, this is for me. Or is it just kind of be like, and there were so many people there. And also another thing is, is we had like a hedge, uh, um, a trader who was talking about how great derivatives and futures markets were. And I was like, who the hell, who, who are you talking to? Do you really think that that Bitcoin futures is awesome? It sucks. And then of course, uh, and my friend Brian was just like in my ear the whole time going, this guy's full of blah, blah, blah. And point is, I think we can just kind of pare it down a little bit. Simple place, little bar, place to meet up, talk crypto, and make it super simple. That's the goal anyhow. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments section, but that's it for today. So if you liked today's video, found a little value, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive, and that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. See you in the next one.